Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Amen. Um, this message this morning, kind of, it's not really a Father's Day message, but it'll work to a certain degree. We're going to talk about giving honor to whom honor is due. So we'll look, start out in the 13th chapter of the book of Romans. Hallelujah. Looking down into verse 7. Hallelujah. It says, Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom dust custom. Fear to whom fear. Now, the word fear used in this context is more of a reverence or reverential awe rather than being scared of something like you're scared of a rattlesnake. Okay? Um, or, you know, you go to a horror movie and you're afraid of the devil that's running around on the screen or something. This is, this is reverence. A reverential awe. Um, with the word fear does work in the sense that we're saying, you know, you're afraid to um, grieve God or grieve the spirit of God or be disrespectful to God. Okay? So reverential awe, reverential fear. Honor to whom honor. The word honor means to hold in high esteem or regard. We live in an era, you, you, I mean, this has been going on really strong for in our nation since the the uh, 60s with the uh, onset of the, the uh, hippie move the anti you know really the hippie movement was not really the hippie movement as much as it was the anti-establishment movement everything that was normal was the enemy authorities you know the police were called pigs you know uh, anything that your parents believed was stupid um, anything that was established was wrong and all the college professors are dropping ass of smoking dope and purporting everything in the world radical and crazy and lunatic that you could have on the college campuses. That's where all the, that's where all the sit-ins started. That's where all the rebellion started. On the college campuses with these lunatic socialists, really Marxist, Leninist, so, uh, communistic type professors running everything. And they brought in, a, and, and, and everything they did was a, was a disrespect for authority. Now, some of you were old enough to remember that era. Uh, the sit-ins on the college campuses. Now, Vietnam became the, you know, the, 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 the rally point for this, but the, the fact of the matter is it was an anti-establishment movement. Now, the funny thing is all those guys who hated the, the establishment are now all your Wall Street uh, yuppies. They're all, the hip, they're, they're all the professionals who are making, you know, using capitalism to make fortunes off of. They were all the ones who were against all the capitalists. Don't need, just need love, man, peace, groovy, you know, you know let's be philosophical. Uh, but that whole, that's a spirit. It was a spirit. It was, a, and it was, it rebelled against all authority. And um, we, we couldn't, we, we, you know, God was no longer allowed in the classroom. We had the Supreme Court ruling. You couldn't pray in the classrooms anymore. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't spank children anymore. Spock wrote his dumb book. And I say dumb book. Your children have to be your friends. Don't spank them. You'll teach them to hit. You know, don't, don't break their spirit. You know, let them do whatever they want to do. Well, that's not, that's not the Bible teaches us. And, uh, but <clears throat> this whole thing, and it birthed another generation and even, that's gotten even worse of anti-respect uh, for authority people. I hear kids now, uh, you know, they call their parents by their first name at 13. Hey, Joe, Louise. Now, most of us know that if we did that one in our generation, the fact is that we probably wouldn't be in the service to hear this message today. We'd be a wall ornament somewhere like a tanned hide, you know? You know, your mom and daddy would take you out back with a tobacco stick and beat you with it. Now, that's bad because those old tobacco sticks were hardened oak. You know, they were about that big around square, about the, but they were, they were kind of square, about that long, but they were oak, and they were hardened. They were kilned oak. Man, they, I mean, you get hit one of them, knock you out. Hello? And, and so, you know, we have now a generation, they call, you know, and the teachers in the schools, oh, don't call me Miss So-and-so, that makes me feel, oh, call me, you know, Shirley. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just that spirit teaching disrespect for authority. Amen? You know, I'll, I'll have people, you know, that want to call me Ed. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, peers, uh, but I'm the pastor, you know? 
It's, it, you know, and, and even in the Bible, that's not, that's not scriptural to you know, refer to as pastor. Peter referred to Paul as the beloved apostle or our beloved brother. There was, there was an element, you know, growing up, we used to, now, now country folk used to always call the preacher either preacher so-and-so or brother so-and-so. Now, you know, it, they, in other words, they were terms used to respect authority. Right. Amen. Amen. And it's the right thing to do. Amen. <clears throat> we don't have that much anymore. Hello. I said, we just don't have, I mean, kids calling other, I mean, kids, eight-year-olds kids calling adults by their first names. Right. It's not right. But see, it's not their fault. It's the culture and the parents and the people over their lives who don't and teach them respect for authority. We're to, we're to honor those in positions of authority in our life. Amen. Amen. I remember a number of years ago, my pastor told me, he said, he said hey, 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 look, just, just call me John. You know, we're, 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 we're ministers. And, and I, I said, I can't do that. Now, another minister, I can call them by their first name, you know. But in his role in my life has always been pastor. So I still call him pastor. Amen. I still call him pastor. And he's only a year older than me, but that's, that's irrelevant. It's the position he held in my life. Amen. And so I respect that for that purpose. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, you know, we, we, need to, we need to get back to respecting that. I, I, I can tell you in some of these big corporations, you walk up to the guy on the top floor and say, hey, hey, uh, uh, hey, Joe, and see what happens. The next piece of paper in your, in your mailbox will be pink. Hello. I'll bet you, I guess kind of a sense that over at High Point University, the, the people coming in from the, you know, the different places don't go in and say, hey, Nita, what's up? Are you, you hear him call all the time? Dr. Cobain. There is, let me say, let me say don't, don't, don't think I'm being crazy. There is something about honoring and respecting the authorities in our lives, including our fathers, our earthly fathers, that affects our life of faith. How we treat them and how we respect and honor them, are you here, will affect your faith. Amen. We sing through this era starting in the 60s. And probably starts in the 50s, you know, music. The ability to broadcast music and, and preach rebellion through music had a lot to do with it. Television, the attitudes on television. We watched, my wife and I watched that movie not recently with Amanda Bynes, What a Girl Wants. You know, her dad's the, the Lord of the Lord of, in the house and in England. She was, she's living in New York. She comes to find, and she's calling him Henry all the time. I hate that about that movie. She's 17, Henry. Even if, he, even if he is her father, and she hasn't known him for 17 years, he's a lord in the house, uh, the house uh, of lords in England, should be referred to with respect. And that's, but that's the attitude that, that television presents. You watch the kids' shows, and they, they talk to their parents, and they, they have attitudes with their parents that are ungodly. And your kids, you let your kids watch it. Your kids are brought up watching Disney and the attitudes of Disney. You know, talking about their parents or talking to their parents with disrespect, calling them by their first name. You know, there's, there's just something wrong with that. In our schools, there's no discipline. Society has an overall attitude towards anyone in authority. Um, in the world, we can understand that because the world's ungodly. But it's crept into the church. The church should not have that. Should not be in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Look, look what Timothy says. Paul writes to Timothy in the second book of Timothy, chapter 3. Um, we're reading from verses 1 through 8. He says here, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers. Listen to this next one. Disobedient to parents. He chunked right into the middle of all these things he's saying of boasters, proud, blasphemers. He listed disobedient to parents as one of those things. Are you here? 
unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. I guess you can figure that one out. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, high, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Stop. He threw in there disobedient to parents with all that stuff. And all we can say is, wow. See, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, Proverbs says. So we don't need to be rebellious. We need to be submitted to authority. We need to be respectful of authority. Amen. You need to have a godly attitude about things. You need to treat your parents right. Well, I don't agree with how they did such and such. Well, you still got to treat them right. Amen. Can I get a grunt? You might want to grunt somewhere. Uh, Nathan's grunting. All right. Thank you, Nathan. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power there from such turn away. For this sort are they which lead, creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jens and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. He said those that are disobedient to parents, and that's what he said here, he's one of the things, have corrupt minds and are reprobate, reprobate concerning the truth. What's he talking about? Honoring, uh, having, you know, let's see, when we talk about parents, disobedient parents, let's kind of throw that in here to that whole thing of, of the elders, the, the natural parents, and the spiritual parents in your life. Spiritual authority carries the same thing. Though you have many teachers, you have not many fathers. Pastor, um, one person did some studying kind of and said, you know, we, we say shepherd, but it also kind of has that, the, the meaning of a father figure, spiritual father figure in your life. Pastor of your church, where you go. Now, everybody, when you're growing up in the natural, gets to a point you think your mom and dad don't know doodly squat about anything. We all went through that. I know everything. Then about 20 years later, you go, man, my mom and dad really got smart the last 20 years. No, you just figured out that they knew what they were talking about all along. Hello? I am. I'm going to keep saying it too. It's the truth. Somehow I know we come along and think, man, I got a grip on everything. Or if you go off to college, the professor tells you how stupid your parents are and how smart you are and how bright he is. You know, he knows everything because he's got a Ph.D. Dad Hagen finally got one day. He said, I finally figured out that Ph.D. meant post hole digger. Because a common post hole digger has got more sense than that. Amen? And some of the stuff they espouse. Now, one of the things that, do, one of the, one of the things that, that universities like to do is they like to break you down from everything you believe and rebuild you. The problem is they want to rebuild you into what they think. And what they think is 98% is of the time ungodly, humanistic, antichrist. Hello? And their whole job is to destroy everything, every value your parents put in you. All right. So, what do we do about this? I, I'm, I'm trying to kind of cover this because we really ran out of time this morning with, with uh, what the Spirit of God ministered. To, so, we always, 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 go back to what the Word says. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 and 13 says this, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. That's a strong word. That right there is enough to say about anything about spiritual authority. Amen. Said those that labor among you know them and to esteem them how? No. It said, come on, very highly. All right, come on, computer thingy. Where'd you go? It did, my, my whole notes just disappeared. There we go. They're back. They're back. They're back. They're back. Hallelujah. Said, esteem them very highly. How? In love. I find it interesting that everybody believes that the love, the love commandments only refer to the pastor towards you and never them towards him. That they can say anything they want to say about the pastor, that's okay. 
Now, I'm, this, because I'm in the pastor, I'm, I'm dealing with this. But you know what? This goes in how you, you, know, how, you, how you treat your parents. Your parents have to love you, but you can treat them like dirt. No, it don't work like that. You expect your boss to give you a raise, but you don't have to give all your effort to give him a good job. It don't work that way. Hello? You owe me a good job. Now, he don't owe you squat. That company don't owe you a job. You know, I know, you know, somebody said recently, you know, uh, stop calling everything entitlements because if you didn't earn it, it's not an entitlement. It's, it's a handout. Amen. Think about it now. Just because you're breathing, you're not entitled to something. The, you know, that our, the preamble to our Constitution did not guarantee you well, or maybe the Declaration of Independence. We had the right, you know, it tells, tell, talks about that we should have the right to pursuit of happiness. It didn't say you had the right to happiness. If you don't do anything to get it, you're not, you, shouldn't have the, you shouldn't have it. I can't guarantee you happiness. Can't pass a law to guarantee you happiness. We've got such a messed up mindset now in, 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 the, in the world, in America. You know, we want, we want everything handed to us without any effort. And we've got to do certain things. There are principles we have to apply. The great, some of the grace teaching teaches you're going to get rich no matter what you do because God's going to bless you because you're in his grace. Yeah, his own word says, you know, let every man you know, give as he purposes his own heart. And whatsoever man sows, he, he'll reap. Amen. God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Multiplies your seed sown. If you don't sow the seed, you don't get a harvest. That's biblical principle. Amen. If you don't honor authority, how, how do you expect... Um, your parents to guide you if you won't listen to them. Hello? How do you expect your pastors to, to guide you spiritually if you won't listen to them? It, it, it's, it's, it won't work. Hello? Well, I disagree with you. Well, so does everybody else. At some point in time, can I give you a secret about the, the disagreement thing? A lot of times when you disagree with somebody, about 30 years down the road, you find out you agree with them, you were wrong. Especially when they're older than you. I remember at Ramah uh, back in 1980, I believe it was the fall of 80, or I believe it was the fall of 80, but it may have been the spring of 81. Brother Summerall came and ministered for a week uh, in our classes. Now, let me tell you, my, my year I was at Raymond, we had Brother Summerall come, we had Brother Copeland come, we had Jerry Savelle come, we had Dima Shakarian come, we had um, uh, John Osteen come. <laughs> That's not a bad lineup, is it? They all came. Uh, now, Fred, we got Fred, on, Fred Price on, on the video. Two week, uh, a week of Fred Price on teaching faith foolishness presumption by video. Hallelujah. We had, we had about it, about the, the, all the big guys come. And then my graduation was Oral Roberts. Norval Hayes came. That's a pretty good school year, wasn't it? <laughs> Loaded us up. But I remember when Brother Summerall got done, I remember him saying something. And, and, and then the next week, Dad Hagen got up and said, you know, Brother Summerall said something last week I thoroughly disagreed with. And I know what he was talking about. Because I, I was sitting there going, hmm, hmm. He said, but 15 minutes later, he said something that gave me the answer to something I've been praying about for over 10 years. And that's what he told us. He said, eat the hay and leave the stubble. You're not always going to agree with everything that, some, that, that somebody you're, that's in a spiritual authority in your life says. But you've got to eat the hay and leave the stubble. Right. Amen. 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 Think about that now. And what Brother Hagin went on to say, he said, if I had shut him down right then, I'd have missed that answer. 15, 10, I think it said, actually said 15, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was over 10. Been praying, been praying and seeking the Lord about something for that long, and right after he said something he disagreed with, he said something and gave him the answer to what he'd been praying about all those years. Wow. See, you can learn to respect the authority and learn to receive, and if there's something that's really that you just disagree with, you can eat the hay and leave the stubble. Right. But you don't change how your attitude Brother Hagen and Brother Summerall were, were good friends, lifelong friends. Amen. Are you here? You're going home. Don't always agree with everything you say. You just go on with life. You don't have to pack up and leave just because you disagree with something. A lot of kids move out of mom and dad's house because they disagree with the rules. 
Those rules are there. I can guarantee you 95. Now listen, I mean, you've you got crazy parents. There are people who are just crazy, crazy, need, need Jesus. Don't parent according to the Bible. I get that. But you know what? Let's just kind of get beyond that, those exceptions. Let's go with the, with the general rule. Let me tell you, grass is not greener on the other side. Are you ready for I saw this on, on Facebook the other day. I thought, man, that's good. I'm going to use it sometime soon. I'm going to use it now. Grass is not greener on the other side. It's greener where you water it. If you'll water it where you are, it'll be greener. Hello? Y'all here, you're gone home. Everybody's looking for the other side. Man, it looks better over there. You know, it's amazing how that when you get over there, it's not as good as you thought it was. Now, let's go back to old relationships. Guys, people dating, and some girl comes along, and they're, they're dating one girl, and all of a sudden she flaunts herself as better. You get them, you find out you just jump from the frying pan into the fire. It ain't better, it's worse. Hello? She won't any better for you. She was worse for you. But it just looked better over there. Looks can be deceiving. All right. Philippians 2, 25 through 30. Yet I suppose it necessary to send unto you Ephroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants, for he longed after you and was full of heaviness because you heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I send him therefore the more carefully, that when you might see him again, you may rejoice, and that I may be less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation. The margin says honor such. Because of the work of Christ, he was dying to death, not regarding his life, but to supply your lack of service toward me. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 15 through 18. I beseech you, brethren. You know the house of Stephanus, that is, the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Well, we need more people addicting themselves to the ministry of the saints, don't we? I said, we need more people addicting themselves to the ministry of the saints, don't we? Yes. All right. That ye, listen, that ye submit yourselves unto such, and to everyone that helpeth us, with us, and laboreth. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortanius, and, um, or Fortanus, for Fortunatus. Boy, that's a name and a half. And Achaeus, for which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours, therefore acknowledge ye them as such. Uh, the the uh, New Testament in basic English says, give them respect. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 to 19. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially that labor that word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle the ox that treadeth the corn. The labor is worthy of his hire. Listen to this one. Receive not an accusation. Receive, against an elder, receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. That's strong. Does anybody just come and say, well, so-and-so did the pastor this or that minister did this. You don't have to receive that accusation. Unless there's two or three witnesses to it. Amen? Bible, Paul, we don't one place, said, don't rebuke an elder. Hello? Then the sin reproved before all. Paul, you know, and, and he was writing that to Timothy. In other words, the elders that, that are in sin re rebuke them before all, but he did it, not the people. He said, don't rebuke an elder. We're not to receive, you know, now listen. The devil will come to you about your parents, tell you how bad they are, how, much, how stupid they are. Your college professors will tell you how dumb your parents are. And the thing is, they're probably a parent. So I guess they need to go tell their kids that I'm stupid because I don't know what I'm talking about because all parents are stupid. Now, the thing is, they always present themselves as the only one that has the truth. Now, truth is in the Word. And I'll tell you this, if you will honor and demonstrate respect to those that the Word of God teaches us to honor and give respect to, God will use that means to minister counsel and wisdom to you. The minute you lose the respect the minute you, that's the minute you shut down the avenue which God desires to use to minister to you. I'm just telling you, that's how it is. That's why you can have Gwen sitting right there and Gwen going, man, that's good. I'm, and get wisdom and revelation. And somebody else over here mad with pastor. And they sit right next to him and they're sitting there they're mad. He don't even know what he's talking about. He's preaching right at me. Love that one. Well, you know what I had to say about that? The shoe fits, wear it. 
If the Spirit of God's talking to you, let him talk to you. It's for your good. If he's rebuking you and reproving you, it's, it's for your benefit and for your safety and for your health, spiritually speaking. I used to say, you know, we don't, don't, you know, don't get uptight and think, you know, he's preaching at me and all this. Oh, maybe I am. Right straight at you. By the Spirit. Now, some people will say, he's just in the flesh. Do you know the Holy Ghost is bigger than your flesh and bigger than my flesh? And the Holy Ghost knows what's going on in your life? Amen. Amen. And we need to honor and respect the work of the Spirit? Amen. That's why the Bible has so much to say about honoring those over us. Because, yes, they're in the flesh, but they're anointed by God. Did you know that Jesus' brothers and sisters were offended at him? And could not receive from him. You go through your Bible and find out what happens when people get offended at spiritual authority or natural authority in their life. What happens to their ability to receive? Amen. It's shut down. They cannot receive from that which they're offended at. So when you think your parents are stupid, it doesn't matter what they say, you can't find any wisdom in it. And if you would just listen, you save yourself a whole heap of trouble. Isn't that right, Brother Benny? You keep yourself out of a whole lot of trouble. Christians do it all the time. Somebody gets on television with some hot, new, heavy, revy, which is usually just an old heresy rehash under a new title. And pastor says something about it, and they start, well, pastors don't know what he's talking about. Pastor's been out in the been out in the field too long. Got some sunstroke going on. This young, this new guy showed up on the scene. He's got some revelation that I need. And pastor just don't know what he's talking about. No, pastor, but see, same thing happens in the in, in the natural. You find some parent who's cool. I remember this. I remember one time I was I was uh, at the beach on my well, that's my junior senior, and, and um, we had. Our high school, that met up with a bunch of guys from another high school, went into one of the parents' house. He says, yeah, I let all my kids drink, you know. And, everybody th and everybody's going, man, he's cool. No, he wasn't. He wasn't cool. He was stupid. Hello? And he was trying to work against everybody else's parents' teaching and present himself as the cool one. And that's what people do who disrespect authority. They always present themselves as the cool new guy with all the answers when, when the tried and true is really the answer. You got people coming along saying, now ah, it's all right to live together because you're under grace of that. Now, I know the Bible says, you know, and uh, all these old Puritan Christians who don't believe that homosexuality is right. It's still wrong. It don't matter what kind of new book you write, if you rewrite the Bible, whatever, it's still a sin. It's still ungodly. The Bible says you have, you, you're going to be given to a reprobate mind. You read that, you read that book passage in the, in the book of Romans where Paul talks about... Uh, Men leaving men and turning, burning the lust one toward another, working that which is unseemly. And the Bible says this, he goes on and says this, he gave them over to a reprobate mind. The mind void of judgment. It doesn't matter what, what, what some lawyer says, it doesn't matter what some senator says, it doesn't matter what, it really doesn't matter what any bozo commentator on television says. Okay? God's word is God's word is God's word. It doesn't matter if they wear a clerical collar or what, I don't care. If they disdain the word of God. See, I mean, for us, authority starts with what? God's word. Amen? Hallelujah. We're to give honor to whom honor and respect that authority. Double honor to the, to the elders who minister in word and deed. And don't receive an accusation against them. Unless there's two or three witnesses. In other words, if he's living in sin, that means if you disagree with how, his decision or how he does things. That's, it. that's not how it, that's not part of it. I mean, for, uh, we've been in ministry for a number of years. Um, I was ordained in 1981. We worked in our church in Greenville from 81 until we moved here in 87. And I'm going to tell you, there's always somebody coming along who thinks they know better. They know the right plan. They know the right way. We, we just uh, found out there's another church in this area. It's a big church. And they're deal they, 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 you know, some, they got people in the church running around saying they don't know what they're doing. The pastor's not pastoring right. He's not doing this. It's a big church. 
That's a church like ours. It's a Raymond church. People in the church running around there going, saying, well, pastor, pastor ain't doing his job. It don't matter what size you are. They've got people doing that kind of stuff all the time. It don't matter what, what your family's like. You've got, you got to have that spirit try to enter in and get into your kids. And you, you children, you need, to, you need to learn to respect your parents, respect your dads. Hello. Amen. Or we'll beat you in the middle of the night with a two by four. Because they get to a certain size, you just can't do it anymore. You know, straight up, you got to do it when they're in covert. Sneak in the middle of the night and knock them in the head. You know, see his bumps on Nathan's head? Anyway. Amen. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey them, they have the rule over you, and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls, they must give an account. That they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that's unprofitable for who? You. The Bible tells us here that it's profitable for us to obey and submit to those with the rule over us. If you can only receive from your spiritual leader when you agree with them, it is not submission, it's agreement. And we're not talking about uh, submitting to false doctrine and to error, erroneous doctrine. But we are talking about where places you disagree, you're still submitted. Submission begins where agreement ends. You know, you're not submitted if you're in agreement with me. And if you don't like the way I run such, 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 such as a pastor, then, and, 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 and you run off because you don't agree with it, you're, you, you weren't submitted. The Bible says to submit with them, to submit to them. It didn't say agree with them, it says submit to them. Well, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? That's talking about uh, spiritual things of, of ungodliness and godliness. Being saved and being unsaved. Being yoked together with unbelievers. It's not talking about being in the church and you're not, not liking the way pastor did this. Or being in your family and not liking the way your dad did that. The Bible tells us to obey and to submit. And until you've gone past agreement and still submitted, you're not in submission. And you're, dis and you're disregarding what the Bible says. This is the quietest y'all have ever been. Can I get a hanky? Hallelujah. All right. What was that noise? Oh, a phone. Okay. Amen. Realize the ministry gifts are given of God. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the work of the ministry. I mean, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Pray for those in authority. Uh, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, uh, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Do not speak against or lightly of spiritual authority. Remember what 1 Timothy 5, 19 said, you know, not to receive an accusation against an elder, but by two or three witnesses, not talebearers. They are God's messengers in your life. And I am telling you, trust me, I've been at this for a long time. When you receive a word against a leader in your life, Satan will use that to shut down your ability to receive from them. And they have wisdom from heaven. They are God's mouthpiece. Now, they are not the Holy Spirit, but they are sent to speak into your life by the Spirit of God. And Satan will use things to shut that down and close up the very thing God wanted to use to be able to speak into your life. I've seen it happen way too many times. I've seen people miss God because of that. There was one ministry that somebody was in the ministry and uh, they got kind of whatever and, and um, the head of that ministry wanted to release them and let them get out of their ministry. Didn't do it at the time. Later they came not too long after said, I thought I was supposed to go out on my own now. And they just looked at him and said, I believe you're right. Another minister in, in a ministry um, got upset over something. Now, I'm not going to use his name, but I, I can tell you, it was with Brother Hagin. This one was with Brother Hagin. Somebody very, very, very close got upset about something years ago. This is, this is 30 years ago. Got upset about something that, that, that was going on, left the ministry, went out on their own, fell on their face, came back, and said, you know, I, I believe I'm supposed to, I suppose, you know, is there a place for me here again? And uh, the person in charge of the ministry went to dad. He said, well, so-and-so wants to, you know, he said, well, tell him we'll look for a place for him. 
He said, but before we do, call him in here. I want to talk to him. Walked in, said, sit down. Pointed his finger at him and said, because you left me, there were things I couldn't do in my ministry. End of conversation. Wow. He's still there. <laughs> he hasn't left since. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And he, I mean, he may have gone on again at some point in time, but it won't be because of the reasons. <clears throat> it won't be because of offense. Right. Now he's regarded as one of the most um, solid and stable and resources of wisdom uh, in that entire ministry now. But see, he got offended about something and it shut off. He, and if he hadn't come back, he'd have missed it. May, may have had a decent ministry, but have never had the things he has now because he would, have, he would have never gotten where he needed to get back to. He had to, he had to repent. And of course, when, when Dad Hagen looks at him and says, there are things I couldn't do in my ministry because you left me. <laughs> That's just bad. All because I got offended about something. Satan will use anything, even in your, own, your natural families. I'm still, still, still talking about honor. I'm using spiritual things because we're, we're a spiritual family, but I'm telling you, children with your parents, don't dishonor your parents. They're the very ones that God can use to speak into your life, wisdom that you just, you know, and you may go, I, my parents haven't got any wisdom. Have they lived? <laughs> They've got some wisdom just from breathing. Okay? You know? You try to tell, you know, you tell your kids, now look, don't, don't drive so fast here, don't do this. And it's not because you think they can't drive, it's because you've been down there and seen stuff happen. Or stuff has happened to you. Or you blinked that one time and ran the red light and almost had a wreck. You, you've, had, you've got life experience that this is, is a wisdom you can pass on. Amen. Amen. You're coming up too fast on the back end, the brakes work. No, no, you don't understand. I've come up on the back end before and I hit the brakes and they, did, and, and they were gone. There weren't any. And just happened to be driving a straight shift at the time. I mean, you're, you're downshifting like crazy. Using the engine to brake you, but there's no brakes there. Anybody ever have your brakes go out before? Well, if you come up on something at 45 miles, I see your kids don't get that. They're, they've, they've never had the brakes go out on them. And you pray they don't ever. But if you come up on somebody's tail end at 45 miles, I'm expecting to stop in 30 feet. And you put in the things and it goes to the floor and you're seeing nothing there, you got a you wreck. Hello? See, life will teach you some things. So respect those. With a, I'm, I'm not preaching at your son or anything. Just, <laughs> but it's a good example. <laughs> so, so I'm just using it as an example. Hallelujah. Be willing to acknowledge you do not know more than the leader, even if you do. That is another way to say this. Remain teachable. Because, see, there is something that those over you have that you don't have. They have the spirit of wisdom to counsel for you. Does that make sense? You might have it for other people, but they have it for you. Amen. And when you remain teachable and pliable, then God can use them and the spirit of God in them to give you the wisdom and the counsel you need. Hello? Hello? Are you here? You gone home? You got to remain teachable. Amen. Paul was Timothy's mentor, and even with Timothy's own personal ministry experience, Paul was still the teacher. In first, in, in uh, First Timothy, I believe it is four nineteen, uh, maybe Second Timothy. Second Timothy, because it's his farewell charge. I, I left out second here. I'm sorry. In, in 2 Timothy 4.19, Paul's farewell charge to Timothy, even in his final days, Paul was still the teacher. Look over 2 Timothy 4.19. It's in the Bible. Hello. Well, could be 4.19. It's in his fair, something, it was supposed to be something through 419. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's chapter 4, 1 through 19, that's what it was. Or chap, 
So excuse me for not putting the one in there either. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead that is appearing and is coming. Listen, Paul is giving Timothy a charge. He's his mentor. Timothy's been in the ministry for a number of years now. Grew up in a Christian home. The faith that was in his mother and his grandmother, remember Paul talked about that? And then Paul, and then Paul took him under his tutelage, and then now Timothy's been pastoring, and yet Paul writes to him and says, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Listen to that. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Notice Paul's charge with Timothy was to reprove, rebuke, and exhort. We got people now running around saying that you only can exhort. He said reprove, rebuke, and exhort. This is, this is Paul's final charge to his, to his protege, pastor of a church. For the, time, listen, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heat themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And then he goes on and begins to talk about how he is, he's ready to be offered up and he's about done and you know, so forth. But this is his charge. And he's still his mentor. Hello? Hello? A number of years ago, I guess about early 90s, there was a group running around calling themselves the Joshua Generation. All these little 20-somethings. We're going to take over. The old guy's dying off, and we're taking over. We're running. We're going to start running things. Well, see, the problem with the Joshua Generation was Joshua served over 40 years to get to the point of being in the Joshua Generation. Hello? Joshua didn't take over at 20. Amen. Hello? He, actually, he was 80. Right. <laughs> he got to take over at 80 yep. after serving for 40 plus years. Right. But there's a little bunch of young whippersnappers running around t talking about that they're Joshua generation, the old guys dying off. They got the anointing. They're taking over and all this stuff. And uh, Joe Morris, a friend of mine, uh, uh, he's been here a number, number of times, but he said he was going behind this person that was teaching in this, all these churches. You know how guys are. They get in the same kind of circles. And they, they, you know, one could be in the church and six months later, another guy be in that same church. He said he, got, he kind, of, kind of got in the cycle. He was about six months behind this guy everywhere he went. And by the time he got there, there was nothing but rebellion and disrespect and church splits going on by all the young ministers. Because this guy was preaching the Joshua generation. We're taking over. Get, they were going to try to get rid of the Osteens, the Summerall's, the Hagans, and all those guys and take over. Wow. And later, found out he was a homosexual. Hello. Now, keep respect for those of you in the ministry, those of you in the Lord, those of you in your natural houses. Honor them. Remain teachable. The teacher put pupil relationship of Paul and Timothy was not new in the Bible. We saw it with Moses and Joshua. Saw it with Elijah and Elisha. Saw it with Jesus and the disciples. Amen. Barnabas and Saul. Saul and Timothy. Saul and Titus. Or Paul. The biblical principle must not be overlooked if we're to reach spiritual maturity and to continue to grow. When we give honor to whom honor is due, which is thoroughly scriptural, it is not as some would propose that it's man worship. Rather, it's acknowledging that we are to recognize and honor the will of God in the earth. This attitude will lead to a stable, consistent spiritual growth and maturity in our lives. Amen. 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 Well, this was my Father's Day kind of uh, message. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand up and stretch? We got, we got some prayer calls we need to pray over. Hallelujah. Dear Father, we pray over these claws. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. We thank you as the word of God teaches that the anointing of God is transferable. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for this anointing is transferable. We pray over these. We thank you that the anointing of God to heal, to drive out diseases, to rid people of evil spirits. Uh, goes unto these claws now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then when it's laid on the sick, when it's laid on the infirm, when it's laid on those who have evil spirits in them, the healing anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ goes into them, and they're made every whit whole. We thank you cancer is healed. We thank you that... that uh, um, uh, all other diseases are healed. We thank you that the power of God works mightily in these cause. And as it was released into the bodies, we thank you that they're healed from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in the majestic and mighty name of Jesus. And you, everybody agree with that said? Amen. 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 This is Joe's. This is.
We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.